Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. From New York City, the city's nice, so nice day. I can't even forget it. The city's so nice, they named it twice. This is Alex, and this is the Ramble. We'll be here until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, out in my favorite town of the United States is uh, Larry Bubbles Brown. It's the town where I was born, San Francisco. The ruins of San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. I always felt proud being from San Francisco, you know? It, yeah, it's, it, uh, you were one of the few people that were actually born here. Well, I, I was one of the few people that was actually born there. And, uh, you know, to find a native of, of San Francisco is, is, is it's not rare, but, I mean, it's certainly... Most people, that's where most people moved, you know, so. Mm-hmm. And, and I you, just saw the, uh, do you remember this? There was a, uh, there was a, there was a pretty big earthquake here in 1957. I don't know if you remember that or not, but I, I saw some pictures and it was pretty good. Really? I didn't, I don't remember it. I would have been, let's see, at that time I would have been 17. And I'm trying to figure out. What I'm, whether there was an earthquake, I don't remember an earthquake back then. But I, you know, there were earthquakes all the time. Uh, well, this was a really big one, and a couple of freeways, or not a freeway, but a road was just kind of devastated. And I saw pictures. And I thought, wow, that was amazing. How far from San Francisco? It uh, close because most of the damage was done in San Francisco and Daly City. Really, I don't, yeah. I don't remember it. But you know, then again. Uh, I don't remember anything. Who is this I'm talking to? Um, <laughs> Governor Jerry Brown. Yeah, no, I, I start forgetting stuff. Although it's funny, I'm taking this pill called, called Pregabalin, and I only should, I try to not take it every night because like last night I slept nine hours. And uh, and then I wake up and I'm loopy. Like I, I'm, I don't know if I sound loopy now, but I am. I feel loopy. You don't. You and, sound fine. Uh, I tend to remember more after I've taken that pill. Really? Yeah. I mean, we had a discussion about a week ago in which I mentioned people, certain names, uh, like Kirsten Gillibrand. And so I, I didn't have any trouble, I think, except for Gary Coleman with coming up with a name. So, I mean. That was it, Gary Coleman. Yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to think if I remember 1957. You know, if I, re- I, I was just getting out of high school. Or graduating that that year, and I'm trying to think if I, you know, if I remember an earthquake, and I don't. Um, but I'm at. If you say there was one, I believe you. You have pictures. You can prove it. I, I just saw the pictures. Yeah, I'll try to send them to you. Yeah, I mean the one I remember is the Loma Prieta, which is in what uh, eight, sixty-nine, eighty-nine, eighty-nine rather, eighty-nine. And uh, I remember, well, apparently I don't remember it. I said it's 69. Uh, 80, <laughs> 89, and uh, I remember that explicitly because, you know, I mean, our whole neighborhood was decimated. Well, yeah, we were in the worst neighborhood for it. So. Yeah, down in the marina, which, uh, you know, everything got, ugh, it was horrible. But your, your building st- stood, so. Yeah, the building stood. Most of the, well, some of the buildings didn't make it. I remember... There was one that was tilting right into, like, at a 45-degree angle. I mean, it was almost falling, and they were going to tear it down. And the person who owned the building said, you can't tear it down. I won't allow it. We've got to shore this thing up and fix it. And they shored it up, and it's there wow. to this day. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, it was it was really leaning into the street, and they figured there was no way they were going to save that building. Yeah, I remember there was one that just pancaked it. Uh, well, there was Bay, one. Bay and Fillmore. There was one, yeah. Bay and Fillmore. God, how you remember these things? I have no idea. But that was blocks away from me. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and w- the miracle was there was only one person in that apartment house, and he was on the top floor, and the f- whole building pancaked to the ground. So the 
It was now a one-story building, and the guy opened his door and walked out. He walked out in the street from the, yeah, from the third floor. From the third floor. Uh, to this day, he probably has an ama- if he's still alive, he has an amazing story to tell That people. is a great story. <laughs> but, I mean, uh, th- that, that building went. Uh, there were a couple other buildings that were, you know, just couldn't, couldn't make the grade. Uh, but uh, it was uh, it was a uh, was quite a quite an earthquake quite an earthquake, you know. Well, be wild if I had one in New York. Well, we know we do have a fault in New York. It goes right through Central Park. I thought I'd read that. Yeah, so it's not impossible. Oh, we've had quakes supposedly here. I don't know when. Uh, and, uh, you know, even if the earth rumbled, uh, you wouldn't notice it because every time a, a truck goes by, you know, you feel it. So, mm-hmm. uh, but it, you know, it's, um, um, uh, we have a, we have a, uh, and the biggest, f- oddly enough, the biggest fault in the United States, I don't know exactly where it is. It's somewhere in, uh, the Midwest. Missouri. It's called the New Madras Fault. The Madras Fault. That was the, uh. The biggest earthquake in the United States in 1804, I think. Wow. How do you remember this? I used to read this shit. It, re- it was in Missouri, but it, it was so strong, it actually it, uh, caused, it was fel- felt in Philadelphia. Wow. <laughs> but, but, I mean, what, did you have a curiosity about earthquakes? I did, yeah. I used to read about the Madras Fault. It's amazing. It's uh, because you don't think of earthquakes in the Midwest, but uh, that was a huge one. But there was nobody around then, so I guess it didn't matter. I think the reason California is associated with earthquakes is how how frequent we have them. I mean, right? When's the or last like when's the la- when's the last time you felt a quake in San Francisco? Well, a couple of weeks ago, a small one. Yeah, yeah a very small one. And you 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 go a little rumble, and you go, oh, earthquake. Yeah. Yeah. Um, after. I, I do remember, you know, um, I do remember after the uh, Loma Prieta quake, the one in 1989, that it was so devastating. I mean, when I was, I was driving when it hit, and I felt I was going down a, a street. I was going down, I can't remember what street it was. I, that's, you'd, re, you'd remember what street it was. Uh, but I w- went up the hill, and then I was coming down the hill, and... Uh, uh, I, then I put my, I felt the, something happening, so I put the brakes on, and the brakes weren't working. And the reason the brakes weren't working is, yeah, the brakes were working, but the car was bouncing down the street. <laughs> uh, I heard that was a weird feeling because the the, uh, the street was like rising up and down like a snake. Yeah, and I I put on the brakes and I and it wasn't stopping. I was still going down the street, but it was because I was literally being lifted and then pushed and then pushed and then pushed. And finally, uh, we noticed that the the overhead lines because we still had it. I don't know if you have them now, but in those days we had overhead lines for the buses. Okay, because they were electric buses. And uh, the lines were like swaying back and forth. And uh, then we noticed people coming out into the street. They were literally pouring into the streets. Uh, and uh, I said, I think we just had an earthquake. And this was my ex-girlfriend was with me. In fact, we had broken up and then we just got together that night. And uh, uh, so we decided to go take a ride. I'm, what's the street? I'm trying to remember the street. The street, oh boy, you remember where I lived, right? Yeah, so was it the main drag? Or you weren't on Lombard? or uh, No, no, I was on Lombard. No, no, I, well, I was on North Point. I was on North Point and the street over. God, I'm out of, I'm, this that one. could I'm, have been Bay? No, it was the other one, the other one. Uh, the one that goes yeah. up over the hill. Oh, well. I, oh. I can't remember the street. I could look it up, but I don't, I don't have the time right now. Anyway. So we turned around, we came back, and as we were coming back, uh, my girlfriend says, um, look at that building over there. And she's pointing out her side of the driver's seat, and she says, uh, uh, that building is kind of like, uh, got part of it is uh, sh- kind of falling off. <laughs> and I said, yeah, but look at that building. It used to be there. 
and we suddenly <laughs> realize that this is an earthquake. So we get down to my place at North Point, uh, and um, on North Point, and I we we try. And she tries to get out on her side of the car, and she can't because the curb is now you know, higher than the door. Right. So we had to get out of my side. And we just noticed that, you know, uh, uh, the garage doors were open and wedged because of the buildings warping and so on. And it was just, it, 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 we walked into my apartment house and it was fine. The only thing was wrong with my apartment, a whole bookcase fell down and broke, okay? And there were some cracks in the wall. But outside of that, I had no damage. You know, which was amazing, just amazing. Um, so we were we were really uh, you know uh, happy that we were okay. But it, it was it, you know. But then what happens after that is you start getting PTSD, I think, with the earthquake. And every time there's a slight rumble, you go running out the door. Oh yeah, I, we had you remember that? Of aftershocks after that. Yeah, we and, had uh, lots of aftershocks. And I don't think we had, well, we were without power for a few days. Uh, uh, the marina, we were out for about a week, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, it, it, uh, it uh, there was an aftershock. I remember that one. There was a big aftershock, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I was driving um, out of, we were going over, going to go over to Marin, so I was driving out of the marina. As I'm driving out, I turn, and there's this whole building that's almost falling down, and uh, I figured I'm going to get out and help. And I got out to see if there was any help. My and my girlfriend, who's always the bravest of the two of us, is going, "Let's go, let's go. We're all going to get killed." <laughs> and I said, "Don't worry. We can, we'll get over the bridge. Don't worry. No, you, got, you can't go do that." So I didn't go help anybody. Okay. So I got back in the car and we drove over the bridge to my business manager's apartment. And I don't know if we stayed there or we came back. I can't remember now. But I do remember that when the marina was out of power and so on, and, and I, was, I, I would go sleep on other people's couches. I would drive over to my girlfriend's place and stay there. And then I would go to some other girlfriend's place and stay there. And then some other girlfriend's place and stay there. Uh, but it was, uh, it was, gee, I mean, but I, I had this PTSD. You know, every time he felt a little rumble. Uh, it was also a kind of, it took a little courage to cross a bridge at that point, too, because you didn't know if you were going to wind up in the bay. Well, we had these buses that rolled by my, my apartment, okay? And every time they would roll by the apartment, it would make the street rumble a little bit, okay? So, I, but I, after, you know how you, there's a sound in your neighborhood, and it's horrible when you first move into it, and then... After a while, you don't even notice it's there mm -hmm. because you, your mind has an ability to block out sounds. And so I was blocked out to this rumble of the bus. But once the earthquake happened, every time a bus went by, I went running for the door jam. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was, it was really something. Uh, if people haven't lived through a really good tumbler, what happened to you during that earthquake? Oh, uh, let's see. I was I was actually going to go over to Tommy T's in San Leandro and watch the World Series mm -hmm. on their big screen. And uh, for some reason, I decided not to. And if had I done that at that time, I would have been on that freeway that collapsed, the Cypress Freeway in Oakland. Oh, boy. So, yeah, we could have ended this misery a lot earlier. But so what did you do? Did you stay home? I stayed home. Yeah. My parents lived in the city then. I was went over there and they were on uh, Franklin Street and it was uh, I was there when the yeah and the uh, I remember how I thought wow that's a really strong earthquake and then turned the TV on and they showed the Oakland part of the Oakland Bridge had fallen down and yeah what's it, what's interesting is uh, we would have had more deaths than we had I yeah everybody was home watching the ball game well they're home watching the, the ball game but also the ball game it was a, it was a uh, um, um, Bay Bridge uh, series in which yeah. w uh, one team was uh, the uh, the A's Giants and A's and it was the other one was the Giants that day they were playing in the Giants Stadium which was in San Francisco no Oakland uh, no 
No, no, no you're right. Giants, giants. Giants. Yeah, candlestick. Yeah, candlestick. Uh, had it been the other one, more people would have been killed. I mean, it would have been in the thousands, okay, because everybody would be going to that park, and the, then the freeway collapsed and pancaked. That's the freeway that collapsed. And, uh, yeah. So we're very lucky that everybody was out at Candlestick. But it, right, and that was the, uh, remember the guy that uh, he was under the freeway, trapped for days under the freeway, Buck Helm. Buck Helm. And he, you remember the name of the guy? I remember the name, and I had a joke about it because they they pulled him out under the freeway after days, and then they they took him to Ka as soon as he got to Kaiser. That's when he died. <laughs> you mean, I had a joke about that. Yeah, he wasn't dead till they took him to Kaiser. Yeah, right, exactly. He survived <laughs> under the freeway for days. Kaiser got rid of him in an hour. Well, now you you uh, Kaiser, by the way, is a hospital system in California. What we call an HMO now, but at that time, I I think it was just Kaiser. You know, Kaiser Permanente, which was a it was started by Henry J. Kaiser for his employees, and that was expanded to the public. And it was kind of a you know a socialized medicine place. You paid a small amount of money. You usually had to be a member of a union. And uh, you got to uh, go to there, and uh, it, I, I had Kaiser care when I was a kid. My father was a member of Kaiser because he was with the Musicians Union, and it was offered to them, and it yeah. was cheap enough, and you know. So for all the jokes, it actually isn't bad. It's just uh, well, you used to you used you used to just brutalize them. Oh well, yeah, you have to. I think I call Kaiser doctor assisted suicide. Yeah, well, I always use that quote. I always use that quote. It's one of my favorite quotes of all time. But I remember for a while there, you could actually see your doctor for a dollar. Yes. Yes, that was it. Yeah. And uh, it was uh, it was a good medical system. It really was. Yeah, well, that was the plan. Richard Nixon was actually, he saw how the Kaiser system worked, and he was ready to uh, make uh, national medicine for a, America and... You know who stopped it was, ironically, Ted Kennedy, because Ted Kennedy wanted he wanted the credit to go to him, and he didn't want Nixon to get it, so they blocked that. Wow. Wow. That's interesting. Yeah. I thought, you know, you'd think Ted Kennedy would be all for it. Well, I think he wanted his name on the bill. I think that's why. Is that what he wanted? Yeah. Okay. That's what I've read, so I, I should double-check that, but... Well, we, 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 we venerate Ted Kennedy for a couple of reasons. Number one, he was a Kennedy. And number two, he died. <laughs> of, of a, of, of one, one of the few Kennedys that died not of a gunshot. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it, was still, it still was, a, uh, was a, something that affected his head. Uh, <laughs> you know. Um, but as opposed to being blown off, it was eaten from within. So, you know. But we, but I don't know that he was that great a senator. You know, he was just. No, always, I don't think. I think he was a little overrated. He, I think definitely not the brightest of the three Kennedy boys. Yeah, you know, we tend to to, to either hate or really love those those senators who make a lot of noise. But the ones we should venerate are the ones who quietly go about doing their business and getting it done. Right, which he didn't. Yeah. So I don't know. You know, it, uh, but um, anyway, so do you realize we've gone from uh, the earthquake to Ted Kennedy? How did we do that? <laughs> and one fell swoop. Do you ever wonder when you were in a discussion with somebody how you started out at one point and you wound up at another point and you couldn't figure out what the link was between those two things? Yeah, sometimes you go back through a conversation and you say, okay, how did we get to there? And you act, sometimes you can find out where you derailed and went to another subject. Yeah. But, uh, you know, usually that was happening when you were stoned. You know, you're sitting around <laughs> passing a joint back and forth. And By the way, I want to ask you a quick question before we go. We're running over, but I don't care, to be honest with you. Um, but this is a question. I asked Durst this the other day when I was uh, talking to him. Uh, I gave him a call to see how he's doing. And he's doing good, by the way. His leg's starting to come back a little bit. Yeah. But anyway... Uh, 
And I and I was thinking about this the other night. I was falling asleep, or I was sleeping, and I woke up and I thought about this, and I went back to sleep, and when I woke up, I thought about it again, and when I fell back to sleep, I thought about it again. You know, one of those things you just keep thinking about every time you wake up, and it was this. I, I have you on, I have uh, 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 Durst on, I have... Uh, uh, Pearl. Pearl, uh, uh, you know, and uh, 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 Kravitz. I, uh, did I mention Kravitz? No. So there are yeah. four of you right there. Okay, and me, another. What do we all have in common? Uh, Not besides you guys being comics and me being whatever I am. We're men? <laughs> no, 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 no. What else do we have in common? can't think. There's so much. Oh, I'll tell you. None of us have children. Oh. Now, I, right. I started to wonder. I asked uh, Durst this. Why is that? Do you have an answer for that? No. Why there are four comedians I have on this show alone. And, and you could probably name a lot of other comedians who don't have kids, too. Oh, many, yeah. Why? Because, you know, especially when the thing is you get married, you have kids. You have raise a family. Everybody likes to raise families. They're encouraged to raise families. What, what do we fight for in America? The American family. But why is it that among the comedy community, there are no people with kids? I think you can't. It's very hard to pursue comedy if you're trying to raise a kid. How, why is it difficult? You've got to devote all your time to the kid. Okay. You know. Or you have to consider raising the having the financial wherewithal to raise the kid that too that takes a fortune now yeah so you don't have kids you know right uh, uh i mean i've always been capable of having children and the women that i've been married to have been capable except for marjorie because she's you know she's still going through menopause and she's in her late 70s uh, uh but uh i i never had kids and 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 I think it was I cared more about my career than having a family. Yeah, though you, uh, I would say of all of us, I think you seemed like you kind of wanted to have a kid. Well, I would have liked to have had a kid, but I never, but I never trusted with their mothers. You know, I didn't want to be, I didn't want to have a kid by a woman who would suddenly fight for custody. You know, I wanted a marriage that would last, so that kid would have an environment in which to be raised. I think I also felt didn't feel secure enough that I was making enough money and that I was secure enough in my position to not have to come home one day and say to my wife, I just lost my job. You know, so, but uh, I never had a kid consciously. My wife, Marjorie's, never had any kids. And, and she was fully capable of having children. I was fully, I was shooting, I wasn't shooting blanks. You know, <laughs> but I always made sure and was very careful that the woman I was having sex with was protected in some fashion. And, you know, most of them were taking the pill, so it wasn't a problem. But, geez, you know, I just wondered. That It's an interesting question, isn't it? That is, uh, that is interesting. I, I, I do know a lot of comics that don't have kids. So. Yeah. Do you, who, who do you know that doesn't have kids? Oh, God, uh, practically all of them. Really? Yeah. How about, uh, how about Johnny Steele? Does he have any kids? No, ne never want a kid. Did Rob Schneider have any kids? Schneider does. Yeah. He does. Okay. All right. Anyway, uh, you know, it, uh, and of course, I think uh, Dana Carvey does, who you work with. Carvey's got two kids. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, and you know. it, that he actually took time off from his career to raise them. So I don't. I'd, think I'd like most... to think it was maybe the Jewish comics, you know, like Pearl and Kravitz are Jewish, and Jewish. Families are noted for being small, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I can... But it is an interesting question. But listen, I got an even more interesting question. You want to say goodbye? <laughs> 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 hey, thanks so much. I, we've gone overtime on you, but I just... I, but it's I, worth it. I think the world of you, Larry. I really do. Uh, the only thing, reason I want to go back to San Francisco is to see you face-to-face, -face, which I have. Well, we'll do it someday. In years. Um, you know, I'm afraid to come out to San Francisco because I'm afraid I'll hate my hometown. 
You, yeah, you're going to be like Charlton Heston in Planet of the Apes coming back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My God, what have you done? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Thanks, Larry. Thanks, Alex. Okay, bye. Hmm. Well, I don't know. We, we, we're, what happened to my sound? Hmm. Well, oh, there we go. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, oh, yeah. the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. That's right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Larry. Uh, boy, I'm doing, everything's screwing up on me tonight. You know, I just like it to go smooth. Uh, it was going into, uh, it was, uh, uh, what's his name? <laughs> <laughs> into 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 um, uh, bubbles, and I hit another thing here, and it went, and then I hit bubbles, and it and it's one thing after another. Then I just t- tried to go to get this stuff going, and now it's working. It wasn't going. See, oh, well, hi, hi everybody. Um, wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, is she out there at all? Uh, come on, Kathleen. Give us a call. Give us a call. You said you called bullshit on what I was saying about not having kids. Give me a call. Give me a call. Come on, you can't just say bullshit and then anonymously go off into the uh, uh, into the ether somewhere. No, you've got to you've got to come through and say, wait a minute. Here we go. Another message from her. Uh, whatever. <laughs> come on. I want to hear what you what you were referring to. I think I know what you might be referring to, but come on, come on. I want to hear from you. Uh, anyway, let's uh, admit all these people here, and let's hope that also she calls as well. Uh, let me see here. Who we got? Ooh, we got a lot of people here initially. Uh, we got Trucker Steve, and we got uh, 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 Polish Scott, and we've got Jeff, and we've got Alan. And uh, we've got, uh, let's see here, uh, Charlie Wallace. Josh Wheeler should be calling. Where's, jo- where's uh, Charlie Wallace here? Um, there we go. There he is. And Kathleen, you better call. You can't just send me anonymous little text like that and then just poof, disappear. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, I was just saying that, you know, it, it, uh, comics don't have a tendency to have kids. I don't know why. Yeah, you, you know? Uh, if they were Mexican, they would. Huh? And and the reason I never had kids was, uh, for the most part, because I never trusted that anybody that I would have a kid with uh, would last with me, <laughs> you know. And then what happens to the kid, you know? And I uh, so it would have to be a matter of real trust. Um, now, uh, someone I uh, who uh, who is you know. not who is not calling right now. I don't know why. Uh, 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 would be a person who knows the full backstory of that. Okay? Um, so, uh, Kathleen, call. Oh, here she comes. Here she comes. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Now, uh, she'll be here in any second now. Uh, Bob Q. Kazoo. Oh, and there she is with that beautiful background. God, I hate you for living up there. That's terrible. That's terrible. M- move your... Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you move your uh, face in there now. Come on, let's see your face. There we go, and, and move the camera down so we can see the whole face. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no, not that. That's, not, that's nice. Too. That's a no, view. No. <laughs> go back to that view. That was nice. Yeah, that was a nice. It was a nice view. Yeah, it's a full moon tonight. Um, <laughs> Two of them. Um, Wait, wait. Didn't you know this was the night that uh, Gabnet got took off the air? <laughs> no, no. What happened to her? Because I got I, she she texted me while, while I was saying all those things and then uh, called bullshit on me, which I you know I'm sorry. It's not it's not bullshit. Oh look who's there. Yeah, now you, uh, now you did oh, it. Oh, oh, there, oh, you said you would say hi to everybody. Now say hi. There's, oh, there's, oh, there's right a, there. Say hi. There, hi. There's, a, there's a full grown, grown uh, adult midget. There we go. She, You know something? She looks, she could, she could be a midget who's like 18. <laughs> you know? 
Uh, okay, say goodnight, everybody. Oh, she loves posing. She loves posing. Bye. Bye. Yeah. And now, now, yeah. Now, wait a minute. Now, now, Kathleen, hello. Oh, shit. Well, wait a minute. You, you, you sent me a text. It says bullshit. Uh oh. What were you referring to? Well, yeah, to? because you said, well, there, I never trusted a woman to have my baby, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> bullshit. Well, you know it to be bullshit. Except for me. Come on. Yeah, I know. I know. Okay, because good. at one point we thought you were pregnant. Yeah. And how did I react to it? I mean, far better. I was horrified. But you, I mean, oh, my God. I was. I thought it was great. You know, totally. it, it, the best way to do it is by accident. You yes. Know? Not planning it. You know, no. I think that if you said to me, "Let's plan having a kid," I'd go, "No way. No, I don't do that yet." Yeah. Uh. But if you come to me and say you're pregnant, I'm going. Oh shit. Well, at least I'm going to have a kid, so that's the bargain right there. And with somebody I like. I mean, I always liked yeah. you. You know, I yeah. never found anything wrong with you outside of the fact that you're batshit crazy. Yeah. You know. <laughs> That's why she fits so well on the show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, uh, 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 it was, um, you know, I always, I felt that, uh, hey, you know, I mean, even if you and I didn't stay together, oh, I, always, totally. I always felt that you would keep the kid in my life and allow yes. me to keep the kid in my Absolutely. life. Absolutely. You know? And that, that's the important part. And I trusted yes. you. You're one of the few people I've truly, totally trusted. Yeah. You and Marjorie, I trust Marjorie. Yes. You know, oh, absolutely. You know, she doesn't trust me, but I trust Marjorie. <laughs> you know? So, uh, but it was a matter of trust. Uh, yeah. I mean, and look at look at Brian here. Brian didn't have his first kid till he was, what, 48? Yes. Said? And yeah. my, my, so I, I was married before. Yeah. I, I got married when I was, we're together like 12 years, but we got, I got married, uh, uh, yeah, 2009. So I forget how many years it was, but. Anyways, we tried to have a kid. It could not have a kid. Went to the doctor. They said it was because of me, slow sperm, and all that stuff. And then, and then, uh, so when Tiffany and I were together, we said, "Well, let's try to have a kid later. Let's get a house first. And then it was by accident. So we were like, "Okay, well, we were gonna plan it anyway. So good timing." Wait a minute. Well, when when were you? Beautiful, look at the beautiful and, daughter. You and I was watch. shocked that it was able to happen because I kept telling her, "Oh, don't worry. <laughs> Nothing's gonna happen. Nothing's gonna happen." And then, my 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 sperm don't make it to the finish line. They were <laughs> taking a break for a while. No, no but did she say? <laughs> did she say to you that? Uh, did you tell her that you had slow sperm? And who oh, told you that? A doctor yeah, said you had slow sperm. Break, you... well, yeah, because she she thought she was pregnant before, and I said, uh, "Who else were you with?" <laughs> it <wasn't> with me. <laughs> I, I, she wasn't. So she wasn't pregnant. But I told her the story, and I told her everything. So. And yeah, then, and then it just kind of happened by uh, by accident, right? By accident, but we were planning it for later. And actually, when we got the house, it was like a couple months before she was born. So we technically did get the house before. So yes. Oh, well, it's terrific, you know. But look what you got. Look at that. Look at that monster. She's really. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> she's you know. very cute. Yeah. Well, she's going to be a heartbreaker. You know, she's just going to go around posing in front of everybody, and being coy. You know. And I'll be hanging out with Alan and fill up the gun range. Yeah, no, no, you forget the gun range. You're going to school with the gun, and, and make sure she doesn't go out with me. What was who was it? My dear friend. David I got mine Feldman. polished up already. My friend, my <laughs> friend, and I will hang out. My friend David Feldman used to have a line in his act that went, uh, uh, "When my daughter uh, is uh, of dating age, thirty-five, <laughs> you know." <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, I don't know what it'd be like to have a daughter. Jeez, that would be scary. Oh, I, I, I mean, I know I, I know how to take care of a son, you know, because my father took care of me, and so I know how you do that. But I don't know if I had a daughter having to go through all the different crises. You know, and I, so on. you know, I became pregnant. I got pregnant at forty, had a miscarriage, and within two weeks, got pregnant again. Wow. And my OB was telling me, man, women your age would kill for your reproductive system. So I remember finding out that I was having a boy, and I remember calling Simone, 
And I go, okay, we're having a boy. Pick a name. And he goes, I like Marlon for Marlon Brando, Sean for Sean Connery. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know what? Uh, let me look up Sean. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So he was. And what's funny is that um, Sean and David Letterman's son are the exact same age. I'm the exact same age that uh, Dave Letterman's gal gave birth, mm-hmm. and Simone was the same age as uh, David Letterman. And your son's tall, too. Like yep. Yeah. Wow. When did you have your kid, Brian? Huh? When did you have your kid? 48. When I was 41. Oh, you're going to be in the same boat I am, then. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I had mine in 47. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Same. <clears throat> yeah. He's 16 now, and I'm 63, and... Ready to cock that barrel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> plus, I have a, plus, I have older kids, too. Uh, Josh, do you, Josh, you don't have any kids, do you? No. Nope. No. Nope. Okay. Uh, Charlie, we know, has what? One? Three? three? Oh, Two your girls, sperm weren't boy. slow at all. No, and she wasn't supposed to be able to get pregnant because she had so much scar tissue. Really? Oh. After the third That's what they time, always say. Yeah. Well, every woman that I ever went out with wound up having scar tissue, but it had nothing to do with her reproductive system. <laughs> I, don't, oh, I don't think they count the back of the throat, Alice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my mom died when I was 13, and so her name was Adrian Diane Neary. Mm-hmm. So we named Adrian, obviously Adrian, and her last name is my last name. So it's Adrian Neary. So sort of keeps the name going on. So it's nice. cool. that's very nice. It's very nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, uh, you know, uh, the only person that I ever named after my father was me. You know, yeah. my father's name was Alex, and when I was looking for a showbiz name, I'd been using uh, um, uh, Jerry Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, oh, I like when I was growing no. up. I liked Jerry Lewis, so I took Jerry. I, I, you know, and it sounded like good radio name, Jerry Bennett. You know, I took my first yeah. name, and then, the, and then all of a sudden, I, 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 I go in the service. I come out, and I, I get this job in Houston, and they, you know, they say. Uh, and then I was James Bond there for a while, and then they said, "Well, we want you to just do a talk show. Uh, what name do you want to use?" And I was, I mulled it around. I was going, Jerry, Larry, Barry. I didn't want to go back to Jerry Bennett, okay? And then all of a sudden, I thought my father had died recently. <laughs> and it would be a nice tribute to him just call myself Alex. Yeah. <laughs> and so I became Alex Bennett. And it's, uh, you know, it was a totally original name. I don't think I've heard it anywhere else in the business, particularly. Oh. You know, but I, that's, how, that's how I honored my father. It, I, you know, and I, I'm, I'm sure that if I had a kid... A, a male kid, I might have named him Alex, um, but then everybody would start calling him Alex Junior, which legitimately yeah. no, he wouldn't not be. Necessarily, yeah, that'd be confusing. Yeah, he'd be Alex Schwarzman. He wouldn't yes. be. What was your father's oh. first name? Alex. Yeah. Yeah. No. Alexander, actually. Yeah. Normally, it's the mic that Jeff has off. This time, he had the speaker off. <laughs> I'm teasing you. I'm teasing you, Jeff. Oh boy, you. here we go. We yeah. heard you. Yeah. Don't buy. Hey, listen. Don't go after my friend Jeff. Okay. <laughs> I, I protected him last time. We're getting together yeah. soon. Yeah. By the way, him. we're gonna, getting together Alan's soon. Alan's one have, of my buddies. I got nothing. No problem. Yeah, we're gonna have lunch soon. We got to yeah. do it. You got to come down. Hey, there. wasn't your dad a violinist? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Really professional. My dad played the violin. Let me put it this way: so professional that it's the way he earned a living for me, so I could grow up and eat. You know, wow. uh-huh. yeah, and then uh, then the then the bottom fell out of out of the music business. You, do you know what happened? Mm-hmm. Rock and roll. Uh, well, not exactly close, but what it's happened hard, was okay. after World War II, it slowly became popular for combos <clears throat> to exist. And a combo, you don't have strings. Yeah. Nope. So the violinists weren't in as much a call for it. So he was, at that point, he started working like the Curran Theater in San Francisco, and he used to play at the Fairmont Hotel with Ernie Heckscher's orchestra and with uh, 
uh, Eddie Fitzpatrick at the uh, at the St. Francis, and so he had to play with these bands. But they slowly started get, going to combos too. It was just cheaper for establishments to have combos, and people would dance to combos as easily as they would dance to a to a dance orchestra. So he finally the work dried up, not because he wasn't a good musician, but because there just wasn't any work for a violin. If he had played trombone, he probably would have kept working. You know, if he had uh, mm -hmm. been a guitarist or whatever, of course he would mm -hmm. keep working. But so he became a real estate agent. That was his way of paying the bills. And uh, and then he became a what do you call it? He became a, 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 a he was in uh, at the musicians union. What do they call the job? Um, Studio, huh? Studio work? Studio no, stuff? no, no. He was with the Musicians Union, and he enforcer? would... Enforcer? No, no, you could call him an enforcer, but that wasn't it wasn't really it. Sure. It was more like he would be assigned sure. certain... No, that isn't the term I'm you looking for store? either. Uh, the, but there was a term hmm. for it. And Bigger than a bread box? Or organizer? We could stay here and try and figure out what the term is all night, but I, yeah. I don't you have got it. it. Okay. Anyway... He, um, he, he became a, 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 a representative of the Musicians' Union at certain mm -hmm. venues. And uh, he started, uh, they gave, but they, because he was the new guy, they gave him all the places they didn't want to handle. And so they were things like the Fillmore Auditorium and the Matrix, <clears throat> and these were all rock and roll places where kids were coming up playing music, right? And so he was the union representative for these the places. Stewart. Yeah. Business agent. Huh? It's not called Stewart. No, Stewart is you. No, he was a business agent. A business agent. Okay. Yes. What, did you just look mm -hmm. it up? No, I was a liaison at UPS. I was a liaison between Marty Freitas, Local 70. God, <laughs> I loved Marty. Yeah. And United Parcel Service of America Incorporated. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's a business agent is what they were called. I was right in between. And, yeah, and he, uh, he got to, he really loved his job. He said, I enjoy being with these kids who are new in, at music and starting to, you know, come up with stuff and they are such great musicians and so on. And there was a musician who couldn't play these clubs because the union wouldn't give him a card. And the reason they wouldn't give him a card is that you had to go in and prove to the musicians' union you could read music. Oh, boy. That, that was a requirement. Well, because unions usually, their whole thing was, you got a plumber, you want to make sure the plumber knows right. how to do his job, and so he's got to show his ab ability, and he has to be an apprentice for a while, and so on. But in the case of this person, they couldn't read music. And my father thought he was just one of the best guitarists he ever heard in his mm. life. And uh, he went to the musicians' union, and they said, "Well, we can't, we can't give him a, a card. We can't allow him to join the union because he can't read music." He says, "Can I bring him in, and you can listen to him play?" Yeah. And they went, "Okay." Mm -hmm. So he brought him in, and this musician played his guitar, and they were all in rapture. And after it was over, they said, "Okay, Alex, you made your point." We got to yeah. change the way we do business around here. We've got to make sure that a musician can do his job, but do it really well, like this kid just did. And they gave him his card, and the rest is Good. history. His name was mm -hmm. Steve Miller. Oh, wow. oh, nice! Wow! And when my father died, Steve Miller sent a note to my mother saying, "Your husband gave me a career." Wow. Sure did. You know, and uh, uh, it's a great story. It's a great story, yeah. and, and actually, between my father and Steve Miller, they broke this rule at the Musicians' Union that you had to be able to read music. So, mm -hmm. you know, in those days, most musicians would have to read music because they'd be sitting in a pit of an orchestra in the Curran Theater for a musical or whatever, and they have to be able to read off the, off the, off the pages. But Eddie Van Halen was the same way. Yeah. Yeah. And then we got he admitted in an interview he couldn't read music either. Well, there were a lot of people, a lot of kids like coming up. That guy up. was so good on that guitar. A lot of kids coming up at that time who couldn't read music, but they sure knew how to play. I remember Jimi Hendrix was the same way, too. Yeah. Yeah, most rock guitar mm -hmm. players never could read music. 
It you know? would help if they did. Okay, yeah. it would make life easier on them. Uh, I'm sure that people who were like playing with uh, uh, the, the backing, you know, people like Sinatra and so on in yeah, yeah. Hollywood, uh, the uh, what, what's the name of that? The bunch of guys who who were considered the best musicians around. They were guitarists and drummers, Hal Blaine, and so on. Uh, they um, they could read music. Because they had they had to be handed music to play, you know. Yeah. So, it, it, but it, it, you know, uh, it, it, but they didn't they didn't write music. They they played it. They played music, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And you really cared that they could play it well, you know. Uh, and it became a different business, you, you know. They were they were musicians union was still working on old what I call old tapes, you know. Oh well, if we're going to hire somebody and send them out for a job, we have to make sure they can read the the, the charts, you know. And and at one time, I guess that was true, but after the after in the 1950s, these kids started happening. who were great musicians who didn't need to read music. Hell, they were inventing it, you know. So it's a great story. But like Elvis. Hmm. Like Elvis. Yeah, like Elvis. So uh, my youngest son uh, is a musician mm -hmm. at a certain level, mm -hmm. and he works for this uh, music company, and he knows all the composers. He knows he, all the composers. Yeah. He focuses on classical music. Oh, okay. Nice. All right. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. you met Andrew once. Yeah, I think I did. As a matter yeah. of fact, I think you brought him down to lunch with you once. Right. Yeah. He has a lovely family too. I hate him. You know. I'll be looking <laughs> my mailbox. I, I never. I didn't tell you the one thing though, because I have a daughter. Too. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll be looking in my mailbox for a DVD from your son this weekend, Jeffrey. Yeah, a whole. Yeah. Believe me, I, I have a hard time finding out where he lives. Oh. Well, Josh is having had trouble with his computer. I would imagine, right, Josh? Yeah, internet seems a little slow tonight. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully it's working. Yeah, my internet working fine tonight, you huh. know, but anyway. Uh, I like the hat look better, And Alex. luckily this thing hasn't crashed on me all week, so. You know? What? You oh, like, I like you with a hat on better. You like me with a hat uh, on better. Well, you're going well, yeah, yeah. to have to fight with Kathleen over that one. Well, <laughs> just call me that. Like, oh, I hate it. Why do you hate it? Oh what? my God, you're fine without a hat. Yeah, I know. I'm fine. I'm a real fox. Uh. Let's see if I can say this. Fine, fucked up, insecure, neurotic, yeah. and emotional. What? Is that what, is that what fine stands for? <laughs> <laughs> I got a laugh out of it. Sorry. You know, you were talking. Where do you live? <laughs> You, you were good sense of humor for a cop. Yeah, I do. I do. Everybody thinks that. So, yeah. <laughs> I like that. Fine. Fucked up, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. By the way, I'm watching the sun go down behind uh, uh, Kathleen's head. It's very nice. And, very and, nice. and the skies and so on. And I would go, boy, do I miss Northern California. Yeah. Come visit. Yes. Yeah. You could you could sit out in my front yard and look at the sun go down too. Yeah, but I mean, all I'm saying is there's something about Northern California that just I I mean, I was born there, you know. I I grew yeah. up there. It was it's my turf. You know, you were born in Northern California, weren't you, Kathleen? Yeah. Yeah, where where exactly? I San you. Leandro? San Leandro. Okay. Oakland. So East Bay. Yeah. Oakland for me. Oakland Kaiser. Oakland Kaiser. You were talking about Kaiser earlier, yeah? Oakland Kaiser. Yeah, the the uh, the um, uh, what is it's it? Actually, the, the hospital. It's actually, the hospital that Bubbles refers to as doctor assisted suicide. I don't know. Not there was no Kaiser when I was born. <laughs> yes, there was. Kaiser's yeah. good. You're now. younger oh, than there I was, am. There was a Kaiser when I was uh, right after I was born. I mean, one of the first hospitals yeah. I went yeah, to as a kid. You're younger than me. Uh, didn't a Kaiser have cars? Too? Yeah, well, he, what happened? You had Henry J. <coughs> Excuse me, I got something stuck in my throat. Um, Henry J. Kaiser uh, was a guy who made, well, he made, I think, I don't know what he made initially, but then he created cars. Boats. Yep. 
in boats, boats, for boats. The war. boats for the war. Yep, in yeah. Richmond, California. Yeah, and and uh, after the war, he started a car company called the Kaiser Automobile Company. He had the Henry J was his big car, and it actually on the front the grill looked like a set of lips. Um, anyway, like a fish. huh? Fish what? Like a fish. What'd you say, uh, John? I thought it was aluminum. I, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. And then, of yeah. course, you had Kaiser foil. That was the other thing. Uh, yeah, Kaiser aluminum. But he uh, decided he wanted to be able to have a medical plan for his employees. Yep. So he created Kaiser Hospitals. Yep. And he created yep. a hospital for his people to go to. And it was yep. Kaiser. Ki and, and then they called it, I think, later on, Kaiser Permanente. Yeah. And, no good. No and good. when my father joined it, they decided to add on to the people who work for him, who could go to this hospital, people who oh there's the Hen there's the Kaiser right there. That's, That's the, the Kaiser, Kaiser Manhattan. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That isn't the one with the lips, though, is it? No. No, that's the Manhattan. Yeah. Is yeah. that in your backyard there, uh, Kevin? Oh, no, that was a car show I was at a week, two weeks ago. Nice. Yeah. Next to my car. Uh, uh, the, oh. Yours is the <laughs> one that looks like. Uh, a car sucking a lemon there? Is that what that is? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> also known as the Kaiser Permanente. Gee, um, we lost Josh again. Bad night for him. Yeah, he's doing his router now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, um, so, so he, uh, he then started to allow union members from various unions to start joining the hospital. And that's when my father joined it. Because it was great. He paid a couple of bucks a month. And your whole family was taken care of. It was a great deal, you know. And, and it, it wasn't doctor. an HMO at the time. What it was is it was a hospital you went to, and you had it was it was the first thing that we got to know as um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, medicine hospitals, uh, you know. Oh, what am I? Managed medicine? No, no. Uh, it is. Not an HMO, but it was a it was it was the closest thing to socialism you could get. Okay, I mean it was just a hospital, and you when you went there, you didn't necessarily have a doctor. They assigned you a doctor, uh, and I went there as a kid. That was my hospital to go to when you know yeah, I had something too. wrong with me. You know, me too. I'm a Kaiser baby. Yeah, it was called socialized medicine. That's what I'm looking. The word I'm looking. And it, it worked. It worked really well. And uh, I, I grew up on Kaiser. They're, they're still a not-for-profit. Are they still not-for-profit? Not-for-profit. Okay. Yep. All right. Yeah. I Wait have a, Kaiser. Is Wait that a the car you stole, Jeffrey? No, not me. Move, you, uh, move it into your, uh, into your is that a Corvette? Move it into your camera just a little bit That's more. A Kaiser. There you go. Now move it over. See the lips on it? Oh, oh, go up. Let's no, see. go up so we can see it. See those oh, lips in yeah, the front? look at that. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Looks like could have put, could have put some lipstick on it. It looks like yeah. a yeah. It, it, it had it had lips, you know, which is terrific. It was great. Uh, was it a good car? That's what I I don't know. Didn't last very long. They weren't. Another car that was built in the Bay the Area slid inside. Yeah, another car that was built in the Bay Area that's legend it was the Tucker. Yes. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Yep. And when I was growing up, I knew about the Tucker, but the government pretty well put them out of business fast okay. because the car companies didn't like what he was doing. Yep. They made cars safer. <laughs> you know, the headlight thing. would move with the yeah. steering. Although it didn't really need to. That, that wasn't what was adopted, but I think he put seat belts in the cars. Seat belts. You know, yep. and I think he put foam on the dashboards yep. and uh, things like that. So. You know, mm -hmm. uh, he uh, and they hated him. He made, they only made fifty of them before the government shut him down. Are you talking about Tucker's? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How much are those things worth today? Probably a lot if there's uh, only fifty. <clears throat> yeah, one of my friends built built two of them. Mm -hmm. um, he's a really good builder, so they're mm -hmm. yeah they're wow. really up there right now. Well, what happened was um, when they made the movie Tucker. Yeah, Jeff Bridges. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. Coppola went out and found all the people who own Tuckers. Wow. And said, "Come bring them. We need them." 
And I think he got about 45 out of the original 50 that still exists. Nice. Yeah. And they're all in the movie. But what a, you know, what a story that was. Totally. But it's Kaiser nice. was another guy. A lot of people were trying to start, what is, what is that car? Is, yeah, so that nobody will guess. That's a poor. Oh, DeLorean? It's a Saab. It's a what? A Saab. Oh, Saab. Oh, Saab. Yeah. Wow. That's, uh, oh, where are we going? Yeah, that's my friend who, he built that Tucker. Yeah. Oh, that's, oh that's there, there you go. There's a Tucker. Yeah, right there. he just put that one a couple years ago. Beautiful, a little bit of custom. It wasn't all stock. You changed it up a little bit, but nice. Yeah, right. cool. Very nice. Very nice. I still like the 300 ZX twin turbo. No, you mean the one I had? Yeah, I buried the speedometer in that. Did you? And it hit it when you guys. It sure did. Point. Not while I was in it. No, you were in New York. I remember calling you, and you were at first. You were horrified. I said, "Man, I buried the speedometer, and I <laughs> how, well, how high I was, was how San fat? Leandro, and I took my foot off the gas. And by the time I hit sixty, I was in Fremont. And you go, what the hell? And then you said, "How did it drive? Oh, as smooth as well, wait a minute. You took drive. you you actually got the speedometer to peg. Yes." How Paul fast was that? The speedometer. How fast was that? Down Over there. 160. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, if, if you'd killed yourself doing it, it would have been a spectacular car crash. No, you know, I, w I was working at UPS, so what was it, like 3 in the morning? Nobody's on the road. <laughs> You don't know. That's for the highway patrol. You don't know. Well, no, all it takes is one. They would have. That's right. They, and if they caught you, they would have arrested you. And Man, then they it's amazing. I got my degree in criminology with a minor in psychology. They, well, Why? It, it, I don't know. Wait a minute. Wait. Car would have been impounded. It, my car would have been impounded. You know. I was good for it. Come on. Let me just. Not if you got in an accident at that speed. Let me just say what. No. Well, uh, Coming into a hammer. Let me say, what, 30, 35 years later? Shame on you. <laughs> Don't ever do that again. You know, the problem is Alex I feel so bad. Fall, fall, fall. <laughs> Alex has never been in a car that's gone over 35. That's why he said that. Yeah, no. Yeah, that, was a good, that was a good little car. That was a great car. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One time, some guy, remember, we were on our way to Gary's, and we're on the freeway, and this guy, he and his dog. Gary's my and business I don't know manager. What, what yeah. we did to piss him off. And remember, he wanted us to pull over. He was pointing, and then oh. he pulls over, and we take off. Of course. Yeah, well, no, we were, we, our ba biggest uh, hobby was getting people to have road rage, <laughs> to get people in a state of road rage. And so I feel so bad. I honked at this guy, and he was like, did something, and I gave him the <laughs> finger, oh, right? And then he gives me the finger, and I go, pull over, pull over, yeah. right? Right? So he pulls over, and, and I just zip by. right by him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was the look on the dog's face. There was a dog in the car, and he's going, what the fuck's going on here? Don't pull over. Yeah. You know, you know the scary thing, Alex, is is when you do that now, guns come out. Yeah, I know. I'm glad I am. don't live yeah. in there. didn't do it in this day and age. Because we were howling. Yeah. It was so yeah. Yeah, was and that, then one time that, we were at a what, 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 we were at a hardware store, and remember you would turn to me real quick, and I would flinch. The, oh and yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. And these yeah. guys started. I said, "Oh, you you said you wouldn't hit me in public," and all of a sudden these big <laughs> guys, were, <laughs> these big guys are like giving him look. He's like, "Tell him it's a joke." <laughs> Fastest I was ever at in a car is 182 miles an hour, up 680. In the middle of the nice. night there, there's nobody out. And the highway patrol had a hell of a time catching up with me. I think we went about 20 miles before he caught up with me. Now, now, Trekker Steve, you don't speed at all, do you? Uh, maybe a little bit. <laughs> Not in in car, I mean, in your car. I mean, I'm, in I, my I, truck, I can't. I uh, can't. I can only do 65 miles an hour because it's uh, governor. Cut oh, off wow. the speedometer. Yeah, really. Yeah. Huh. Uh, in, in Ontario, trucks can only do 65. They got speed limiters. But 
in your own personal it sucks car. Because when we go into the states, mm -hmm. we can only do 65, right. even though we go into a state like Wyoming or somewhere where the speed limits are now 80. Mm -hmm. Wow. In some states. Hey, where where do you, you, now you own the cab of your truck, right? You own the front part. What do they call it? The, I don't own it. Oh, no. you don't? Oh, okay. No, it's Actor. company truck. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, but your company, your company, truck, your company has, uh, <clears throat> uh, has you on a log, right? An electronic log? Yeah. Yeah, so you got to go by their rules, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you got to stick to 65. Uh -huh. By their rules, yeah. Well, the truck is governed. It, I, I yeah. put the pedal down as far as I go. Yeah, I yeah. Only, do, only do sixty-five. Is there a certain yeah. danger in that? Like, if you want to avoid something, or there's a potential. It can be action. a pain in the ass. Yeah, when you try to a pass. Pain in the ass when you're trying to pass somebody. Yeah. Wow. Because wow. another truck could be governed at sixty-five, and you're out there stuck, and he he doesn't let off. You're just sitting there doing this. You know, I always had a, I always, you always had an attitude like most people have about truck drivers. Ah, eh, fuck those truck drivers. They're just pl plugging up the streets. And, yeah, no, we do. He's right. fuck them four wheelers. Right, but anyway, anyway, <laughs> when I went to work at Sirius XM, Sirius XM actually, if anybody made it successful, it was the truckers in America who all were first adopters of Sirius XM because this was a kind of service which they could follow them wherever they went okay just think about this alex mm -hmm. if you got it a truck brought it yeah yeah but, but the point yes. was i didn't I, I never had that kind of period. attitude i had a negative attitude about trucks and truckers until i went to work at sirius xm and started talking to them and finding mm -hmm. out about their lives and about what they do and i came to really appreciate truckers I mean, uh, and what they do and the service that they provide for this country. You know, it's incredible. All we do is listen to you guys. Huh? What? Yep. All we do is listen to you guys. Yeah. And, and in I fact, our most successful channel practically was the trucking channel that we had. Uh, I would, you know, it, it, stop it, doing that. But yeah, I got I truck, truckers it. calling me, and I really got to <clears throat> like truckers and like trucking. I listen to KGO. I listen to, you know, you. I listen to uh, baseball games all the mm -hmm. time, all day long. Mm -hmm. I, I was on the road 12, 14 hours a day. What do you listen to in the truck, uh, Steve? Uh, ball games, hockey, yeah, uh, yep. music, a lot of, uh, a lot of podcasts, porn. Yeah. Porn. Have the hey, yeah, like there's porn. There's porn radio. Yeah, I didn't have the internet. Oh uh -huh. well, yeah, Sirius had the That'd had the vivid they, have a, they have a lot of ooh and on. and <laughs> ooh, uh, you, you know, ooh, you know, uh, you know you, no, had, Let me tell you something. I had what? women coming by and lifting their shirts up for me. Hang well, on. Well, that happens all the time, right? Nothing wrong with that, right, Steve? You have that happen, don't you? I've been mooned a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here's the thing. Um, I, uh, yeah, now I forgot what I was going to say. I had something that was, uh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I, if, for the longest time, I've kept saying, C what could I do on my on our channel, on GabNet, on the 24-7 feed that we have? What could I do that would get people listening? And I porn. figured maybe I would just go and take the porn. audio track over off of porn films. And just run them endlessly for a couple of nights, or you know, around uh, midnight over at the night, weekend. at night, and yeah. and see if it gets any real audience. Uh, I mean, there's nothing <laughs> wrong with it because it's just people going "fuck me, fuck me, fuck me," ooh ah ooh ah, and fake orgasms, right? Right, right. But I'm wondering <laughs> if that would draw an audience because this certainly isn't. <laughs> What if somebody recognizes their voice as a, as an actor and they go sue you? Well, I don't know if they can uh, prove it, you know, because what I was going to do is I, was, I wasn't going to take any scenes where there was exposition, shall we say, mainly because it's usually terrible anyway. Like, it could uh, be you singing like you do on your intro into the show, the dee da 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 you know? And you can do that and just record it over every four minutes. No, I'm, no, that has nothing to do with 
Uh, I want to put porn audio up. I'm, I'm going to do it one night and see if, if, if all of a sudden by <laughs> 6 o'clock in the morning, everybody in the United States is listening to it, you know? You know what you should do? Put Phil's voice behind I mean, it. Uh, and, <laughs> and this was... Can you imagine that walking into your house? This, by the way, this by the way would drive YouTube crazy if I simply put Probably. up a slide and ran it, because they'll go, "Well, was it was it porn? Well, well, it was from a porn film, but it was only audio. Is it is it against our? Do we have rules against that yet? They'll probably make a special rule, the Bennett rule, you know. Just and make sure you remember Marjorie's phone number in case you only have one phone number to call. Hey, listen, I told you about the time that I put up a camera uh, out my window in my guest room, and I ran it on Facebook as slow TV, and yeah. what I was showing was snow melting from a building across the street. Yep. And I and it was snow melting. I got about a thousand views. Wow. I, I watched and it I'm for figuring, two hours. It was awesome. I, I come in here, I, I beat my brains out trying to do a show, right? I get like, uh, what, 36 people watching right now. And I go, maybe in a day, if I'm lucky, a couple of hundred will watch it, okay? But I put up goddamn snow melting, and people are watching. You watched it, you say, right, Brian? <laughs> Nobody. Yeah, it was great. I, I was trying to do some meditation and trying to relax some stress from work, and yeah, it, it just put me in the mood. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what else I could do besides that that's slow, but maybe paint drying. That may be the next big show I'm going to do. Yes, uh, Alan? So you, 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 somebody can play that in the background over a weekend, not be home. Nobody would break into the house. That could be a security feature. Ooh, ah, Oh, ah, put your teeth back in. Oh, ah, you know, something yeah, like that. Yeah. And, and somebody will say, do these people ever stop fucking? Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah, you know. They're you don't want to break in while, while people are in the bow, middle of bow, bow, wow. But uh, then I was looking, I was looking for audio from porn <laughs> films, not that I don't have a full supply of them. Bow, and, bow, and I, bow, bow. And I was, yeah, I, was, I, was I was listening to the audio on them, and a lot of the problem <laughs> is a lot of them it's like faking orgasms. And I don't want people to think it's like marriage. Okay. okay? <laughs> I want them to think it's something special. <laughs> what are you laughing? We lost Kathleen on that one. <laughs> what? You know what? I got a funny story about porn, Alex. About porn? A funny story? Yeah. Tony talking yeah. porn? <laughs> well, it's not me. What happened is my father lost his job one time. So me and my mother watched General yeah. Hospital. So when I came home from school, I went to put the VCR on to get it ready to watch today's episode. So we go to the episode, and what happens? It goes from channel 7 to channel 63. My father <laughs> says, Dad, what were you doing at 3 o'clock? None. I was cooking dinner. I says, yeah, look at our soap opera. It went from General Hospital to some <laughs> dirty TV show. My mother started screaming. She said, you son of a bitch. You're supposed to be cooking. You're watching dirty movies. And it was a good episode. We couldn't, you know, we couldn't watch it. This is which was a good, wait a minute. Which was a good episode? Uh, General Hospital or <laughs> General or Hospital? We, blew, we want to know what happened. And I says, "Oh my God, look at this!" And it, you saw the channel turn from seven <laughs> to sixty-three. So I knew what he did. He didn't realize what, that I was taping the show in there. So I Days knew what he did. Of I was like, lives. "Yeah." I mean, it's like my mother was pissed that day. Wow. <laughs> you son of a bitch. I used to. I used. To, I, one time, I was describing to my friend Penn Gillette. Second night in a row we've mentioned him. Uh, and Penn Gillette asked him the question. Uh, I said to him, I said, the thing I hate about porn is that whenever I watch it, it's uh, the same five guys fucking the same ten girls. And his reply was, yeah, just like in high school. <laughs> Speaking of that, the, the big porn, I don't know what you'd call him, he wasn't, uh, uh, Ron Jeremy. Oh well, he's he's. He, oh, he I'll just, never forget meeting got, Ron he Jeremy. Just, <laughs> he just got arrested recently for something for having underage minors, or I, I don't know. I can't I remember what he was busted for, but he's going to be on trial for it. Yeah, yeah. It was like rape or something. Yeah. And he'll never work another day in porn. Thank God. <laughs> I mean, yeah, really. That's sad. He was such a midget. I mean, you know, remember. <laughs> What was it? We went down to um, L.A. for Rage magazine. Yes. 
That was another yes, a publication we, that my friend Bruce David was the editor yes. of that Larry oh, Flint Bruce published. David. Yeah. Yep, we ran into Ron Jeremy, and he looks at me, and he looks at you, and he goes, she's uh, not, and you said, no, she's a supervisor for UPS. No, but, no, but here, here's the thing. I, it, 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 didn't we go around with Ron that night? Was that the night we went to? Oh, yeah, Pro it was. That was Spago. I mean, but you know what? No, I appreciate it. Was, it. Was, he was, it was straight a, up. It was the night we went to Spago's, didn't we? Yes. Yes, and, and yes. Guess, guess, who, guess who tried to pick her up? Tony you remember? Do you remember? Tony oh. Curtis. You know the story. Tony Curtis. Yeah. I'm a faithful he comes up, he comes over, he starts chatting her up. Yep. And mm -hmm. I'm going, oh mm -hmm. my God. <laughs> Tony Curtis is trying to pick up my mm -hmm. date. Okay. Oh, yeah. Nice this try. Yeah. yeah. What do I win? Trying to pick he should win a prize for that for remembering. <laughs> this was when he was like in his seventies, probably though, right? Uh yeah. Yeah. yeah, but anyway, years yeah, about a year later, two years that. later, I interviewed him on the phone, and I said, "Tony, I got a bone to pick with you." I said, "I was out at Spago's one night with Al Goldstein, right? Yep. He was there, and yes. Ron Jeremy, and uh, uh, we were having dinner, and you came over and you tried to pick up my date." Yeah. <laughs> he, he said, "I did, huh?" I said, "Yeah." He said, "Well, if I had another chance, I'd do it again." <laughs> <laughs> so anyway that's the woman that tony curtis hit up on yeah uh-huh you told us that story a couple months back but we didn't we didn't see the woman uh, yeah well, that's i was the like woman. i can heal the sick but i cannot raise the dead <laughs> <laughs> but Thank and ron, uh, the best part was ron jeremy at three o'clock in the morning out of the back of his car yes showing us his press clippings Oh my God! How tacky! <laughs> yeah, and know. then he brings out like this dildo, you know, like I had the Ron Jeremy dildo, and I and he hands it to me, and I look at it, and I go, "If uh, swallowed induced vomiting," he snatches it. <laughs> Does it really say that? I said, "No, dude, I'm fucking with you." <laughs> oh, there's uh, there's uh, Jack Bishop. Hey there, heard you talking about porn. Got my attention. Yeah. Woo. You might not remember this, Alex, but you and Ronnie took me to my first porn movie ever in Houston. Wow. <laughs> really? Yeah. Where? I your never 50th seen birthday? Well, wait a minute. Where, where was the I, I didn't know of any porn in Houston. Yeah, they, yeah I'll never forget this. It was a... Uh, uh, a By theater. the way, those eyes are those of, of uh, Jack Bishop. Well, let me let me move my eyes. <laughs> oh, that's a lot better, Jack. Uh, <laughs> now we can see more of you. Well, anyway, you took me to my first porn movie. Yeah. And you spoiled me from then on. <laughs> I'll tell you what happened. Once I went to a porn movie with Al Goldstein. He wanted me to go with him to see the premiere of a male porn film. You know, a, mm -hmm. a gay porn film. Uh, and so we went to it together. And I just, you know, I'd never seen one. And I found it very interesting. You know, I mean, guys having sex with guys. There's no stopping that, okay? <laughs> uh, you know, these guys were just going out. And it was really rough and it was tough. This was in Dallas? No, this was in New York. It was oh. Rough, oh. And rough and tough and, and, and gritty and greasy and everything. And I said, hey, okay, I get the idea of what, uh, what gay porn is like. Now I... A couple of weeks later, Al writes a review of the movie. And he said, I brought Alex Bennett with me, and I couldn't have him keep his hands off my dick. <laughs> you know what's interesting? I, you talk about, I, I can't imagine going to a theater and watching porn. Yeah. I've only watched porn in private. You know something? It is a private endeavor now. Theaters, yeah. uh, uh, why we ever had, I guess we had porn theaters because there was no other place we could show them. Yeah. That's right. You know, we didn't have yeah, video. No other way. Like, you know. I remember there was a porn drive-in down in San Jose. Oh, oh, they had one up in uh, San, near Santa Rosa. Yeah. <laughs> there was a porn drive-in in Fort Worth, Texas. <laughs> this is but, when I was like uh, a teenager. We would go down there. And, and hop the fence and watch the porn. Forget <laughs> hopping like, the fence. On the one between Santa Rosa and Petaluma, it was right on the highway. 
Yeah, on Highway 101. And it was a drive-in theater yeah. that had gone into disrepair. I mean, right, years right. Of, of people weren't going there anymore. So they switched to porn. And as you're driving down this highway and at night, here's a giant it. dick going into a giant <laughs> vagina. And cars are swerving <laughs> off the road. I mean, it was a it was a traffic hazard. Everything. Yes. A friend, of, a friend of mine went there, went to the snack shack or whatever you call it. Snatch. And, snatch. and slipped on some Coca-Cola or, or Pepsi. And I said, how do you know it's really a soft drink and not? Yeah, you know? right. Right. Yes, you know. yes, Jack. You know, if you really want to see porn get fucked up, go and see or have a porn showing with some psychotherapists. What? Uh, I yeah, I have a bunch of friends, you know, who are uh, psychologists and counselors and things. So we go to see Deep Throat. And after the movie, we're sitting around talking about it. And it was like nothing but analytical. Well, I thought it was mildly <laughs> titillating. You know, it uh, it certainly didn't have much uh, 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 romance or whatever. And finally... <clears throat> uh, one of the ladies who was the sister of the of, of my first wife, you know, she introduced me to my first wife. Okay. And she said, I don't know about the rest of you, but when she swallowed that dick, I damn near came in my jeans. And I said, finally, somebody who really got into the movie. Well, you know, I, I people say, what do you do when you watch porn? And I said, the only thing you can do when you watch porn, jerk off. And if you can't <laughs> jerk off to it, it isn't porn. <laughs> you know, that's that's the the reason it exists. It doesn't exist because, oh, I want to have good theater, good cinema making. <laughs> you know, no. You want it, you want it something that's gonna, you know, curl your toes. Yeah, you're not watching porn for the quality of the script right. If you no. can't <laughs> if you can't come to it, it isn't porn. Okay? That's right. So I don't Let understand me. I never understood strip strip clubs. You go in there, you pay. Oh, that's the worst. Bucks. That's the worst. Oh, it is. You pay like thirty bucks to get in, ten dollars a drink. Your buddy buys you a lap dance for fifty bucks. The girl runs up and down. Fifty. And you walk out and you haven't had an orgasm and you're like going nuts. Well, so. no. Here's what. Here's what happened. I had a friend. His name was Paul Montgomery, and he was the head of Play Incorporated, oh. and he loved nothing more than to go to strip joints, to go to these mm -hmm. these places. And he loved nothing more than to drag me along with him so that we could have a little male bonding. So I figured, oh, what the hell, I'll go. And he goes, uh, you want a lap dance? We're 20 bucks a piece, by the way, not 50. 20 oh. bucks a piece. Okay. And I yeah. said, uh, not particularly. He said, ah, oh, come on. So he gives a stripper 20 bucks. And now she sits on me and starts grinding away and blowing in my ear. And I'm going, this is a senseless exercise because yeah. what am i supposed to do grab her tits no they'll throw me out of the place yeah. grab her pussy no they'll throw me out of the place right, right. what am i supposed to come in my pants well that wouldn't be nice what am i supposed to do and that's the point what are you supposed to do i don't i don't understand why people spend all that money i i really don't because he, it's frustrating he bought me you walk about out hornier than you were he bought me you about a hundred dollars worth of uh, of of uh, dancers that yeah. The night. purpose of that is so you can walk out of the club with the worst case of blue balls ever Absolutely. recorded. Absolutely. Well, I, I, I did right by him. I took him to my friend uh, Dennis Hoff's Moonlight Bunny Ranch. Yes. And uh, he, he went in there, and I asked him afterwards, I said, what happened? He said, he said, I said, did you get laid? He said, no. I said, why? He said, I just wanted to talk to her. And I said, why'd you want to talk to her? You didn't want to have sex with her? He says, no, it's not about the sex. It's about the power. And I thought about that. I had a friend who owned a massage parlor. Yeah. And uh, he and I were buddies for a number of years. And I got to be friends with some of the girls. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they'd sit around and talk about their kids in school, uh, uh their relationships with men outside of the parlor. And there was one lady. Be very careful of the story you're telling right now. Adrian just came in. <laughs> uh, there, was, there, there was one lady who was in her 50s. 
and she was working the parlor to get her son through college. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, it, 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 it was a very humanizing experience, just like the intersection, how's that segue, Ben? <laughs> just like the intersection is going to be Oh, I'm jerking off in now. A, in about five minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Catch you later. Okay, bye, Jack. Bye, bye. Alex. Yeah, I'm his whore. <laughs> he comes in here and uses me every night at this time. I'm so ashamed of myself. This is like the... What? This is like Cuomo and uh, Don Lemon, you know, you get the little crossover and, you know. Yeah, yeah. Which Cuomo, though? Oh, the, yeah, that Cuomo. You're, you're Cuomo. <laughs> By the way, we're going to, uh, uh, we're going to, uh, I think on May 7th, 75% capacity at restaurants. Did Cuomo uh, get charged with anybody else lately? Because usually <laughs> the only time he raises the amount of people you're going to have in there. Is so many, I'm losing track, though. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, Take a new one. <laughs> look who we got here now. Now we got the whole family coming yep. here. There, there's, there's the midget. And there, there's the one. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. This is, you were such a lucky man. Absolutely. You know? She like, comes rushing in the room, and then when you're on, she stops. Oh, you got to go back and watch the video. The, the, she was sneaking around behind you just now. Oh, there yeah, she is. Look, look, that there little she head. Is. She's kind of like a she's kind of like a video version of Where's Waldo. Oh, you know, every now and then that little head pops out, and she she waves. And oh, there's a head. See down there. I'm, I saw her. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, where's Waldo? Where's Where's Adrian? Oh, there's Adrian. I see Adrian. Okay. Oh boy. Well, you know, uh, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> times have changed. Stop I mean, there was a time when when people got arrested for that sort of thing. You know, <laughs> uh, I remember the the deep throat trials here in uh, in New York State. Yeah. Do you know it was found guilty in New York City? Really? But upstate, way upstate, like Saratoga, someplace like that, which is out Saratoga in the rural thing. part of the state, it was found not guilty. That, that's what I always found very strange, you know. But uh, do you have porn up your way, uh, 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 Trucker Steve? Is hmm? he still here? Oh, there he is. Yeah. Do you yeah. have it up there? What, porn in Canada? Yeah. Uh, yeah I think so. Yeah. Used to have yeah, a, I think there's uh, companies in Quebec. Used to have a TV show called the Baby Blue Movie. Yeah, yeah. You were yeah. you were talking earlier to uh, your earlier guest about JFK. Yeah. <clears throat> and you know um, he would have never made a good. Well, sorry, it's a little loud. Would have you know JFK would have never made a good boxer. He couldn't take a shot to the head. <laughs> Oh, is that the joke we're going to have to leave with tonight? <laughs> Somebody tell a better one. Sorry, it just came oh, up over my head. No, mouth. leave it here. Alan killed the show. Leave it here. What a way to end the <laughs> week. Jeez almighty. <laughs> and it's going to go all weekend. That's great. Yeah. We could leave with something intellectual from Josh, but by this time I think he's probably given up on the idea. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, on, to, Josh, uh, say something. Thank you to Scott. Okay. And thank you to Jeff, and thank you to Alan, and thank you to uh, Trucker Steve, and thank you to Charlie, and thank you to John Larkin. Thank you, Schmoody. Thanks for the memories. Uh, or thanks for the memories, I don't know. Anyway, yes. and, and uh, 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 thank you, uh, Tony. Good seeing you again. Yeah. And of course, Kevin Tony. and Josh, always good to see you here. And of course, Brian Neary and his gang of idiots over there dropping in every now and then. Is Adrian gone? Yes. Okay, then I can say bad language. Anyway, thank you all. Why don't you all give a big wave goodbye? I'll give a big wave goodbye to the rest of you, okay? There they go. That's our uh, that's our uh, uh, gang for tonight. Uh, we'll be back again here on Monday at 4 o'clock with our pop-up show, which is only on Facebook, okay? So you have to go over there to watch it. And then uh, on Tuesday night, we'll be back here at uh, 1030 Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. 
And by the way, wear a mask, get a vaccination, and do be safe out there, okay? Have a nice weekend, everybody. It's going to be a beautiful one. Masks are slowly coming off.